from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Hi, folks. Cesar here. Thanks for joining us. We have a great show tonight. I'm super excited. And I wish you could be here, folks. We have a representation of some powerful women in our county right here uh, in the studio. And I'm going to introduce you to all of them. But first up, we have my very good friend uh, from Herndon, Mayor Lisa Merkel. She uh, won her first uh, election as the vice mayor in 2010. She won an election for mayor in 2012 and was reelected in 2014. Welcome, Mayor Merkel. Thanks for having me, Cesar. Good to be here. Thanks for coming on. Oh, and full disclosure, I have contributed to your campaign. Just let the folks know. Yep, but that's not why you're here. Nope. I wanted you to come on and let's talk about Herndon. All right, where to begin? How? Look, I've lived in Herndon for a while. And stuff never really got done till you took over. What are you doing that's working and how are you getting stuff done in Herndon? Well, you know, I think, as you know, Herndon has, has it all. It's mm -hmm. got the small town charm. We're yeah. right outside of the DC area. We've got a metro mm -hmm. station coming. We really have the best of both worlds. And I think what's happened since, 2000, um, since 2010, and then particularly since 2012, is we've got a group of people who are working together, focusing on the things that matter, mm -hmm. really focusing on the community and things that we actually have control over. And, mm -hmm. and when, when you work together and focus on the community, some great things can happen. Well, I focus clearly, I've got to say, I'm not buttering <laughs> up, but it's really your leadership. I mean, that's clearly a yeah. tribute to your leadership ability. I mean, you've taken what used to be a lot of frogs and you've herded them, right? I mean, and, and <laughs> so it's working great. What, what are some of the things that the folks uh, out there should know about Herndon? Well, you know, we've really focused on, you know, we've got two big things going on. We've got Metro who's, who, that will be arriving um, in the town in 2018. Awesome. And before that, we're really focusing on our downtown. I know you live mm -hmm. in downtown. I live just mm -hmm. a few blocks from downtown. And we're trying to make it as walkable as possible. Yeah. We have a downtown master plan that's been community vetted. Mm -hmm. We've talked for years and years about our downtown. And finally, we've passed a plan that um, keeps the density low because mm -hmm. people really are interested in keeping that small town sure. feel. Sure. And so my number one goal and the goal of the council is to get that plan off of the page and into reality. We're working with uh, the development community to make mm -hmm. that happen. Focusing on the trail, you know, I think that love the trail. Love the love trail. Love what you did with the lights. Bravo. Well, you know, Bravo. Th that has been a long time coming. I, I know. We finally got <laughs> it done. You know, we worked on some grants, so right. it was not all taxpayer funded. About eighty percent of it is through a grant. Right. We've got halfway through the town lit, and we're going to work. We're actually working on securing grants right now to do the rest of the trail. So pretty mm -hmm. soon, you'll know on the WNOD that you're in Herndon. Because because the lights are on. It's awesome. I mean, I, I think I texted you or, or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. congratulations, the lights are oh, on. Oh yeah, I'm sitting there. I get the, f the first picture I saw of the lights on was from you saying, oh my God, it's finally here. Yeah. So, and I still get those all the time. That's awesome. So yeah, That's it's awesome. really great. So you know, we've got the bike trail um, that I really, I've said this and I can't talk enough about the bike trail. Yeah. We've um, we've said for, my, my uh, thing that I've, that I've said a lot is, you know, we've been talking about downtown for 20 years. Let's right. get it done. Right. But I really think accidentally we are somehow right at the right time. Sure. You know, more and more people are biking for recreation they're also commuting that way yeah and so um, there's a new bike shop in town there is I love that place Can you believe it's been there almost two years now yeah, yeah, yeah. green lizard cycling you got to check it out mm -hmm. um, it is a uh, you know a bike shop a coffee shop Dave and Beth live upstairs I mean it's just a throwback mm -hmm. to the yeah. way downtown was you know years ago so no, I love that and a little area out there and the, the on the Oh, yeah. You know what the, the, my biggest accomplishment as mayor has mm -hmm. been? Uh, when uh, we put some picnic tables out yes. on front of the, in umbrellas. Front of the town. With umbrellas. With umbrellas. Yeah. And it's so funny because it was such a simple thing. Yeah. But it says, stop here. Things are happening. Absolutely. You know, stop and get to know your neighbors. Something else on the town green. Just stop me if you have another question because you know I can talk about Herndon for the rest of Trust my me, life. I know. Here we go. <laughs> That's going to cost you. Okay. So um, we also have a little free library on the downtown yeah. uh, Depot Green, and that's a program. It's littlefreelibrary.org if you look it up. Mm -hmm. um, it's a leave a book, take a book kind of program, right. and so it's right down in the downtown. So we really just are focusing on making downtown a place where people come to see their friends and neighbors, hang out, get to know each other. Very cool. Yeah. No, it, it is. I mean, you, you said it. It's, it's walkable. It's got that hometown, old town feel and charm. And... Um, I think really, again, I'll, I'll say it again, prior to you being in that role, stuff just didn't happen. Um, down the street from me, there's that new development going on. Um, on the Fine other Haven, side, yeah. yeah, I mean, just like cool little development cottages and, and just, 
uh, it just it, it seems like Herndon is just hitting its stride, you know, and yeah. with all this growth happening. Well, you know, I really think that it is, yeah. and I think that you know, I get a lot of credit as the mayor, but I couldn't do it alone. Sure. I mean, it takes a, it takes a council who's got their heart in the right place and is mm -hmm. focusing on the community and and listening to the people and making sure that we're working together to to make things happen. Well, you're doing a lot of persuading because I mean, I I know most of those folks and they don't always agree on stuff. That's so true. You, you, you've Clearly, uh, got the uh, talent for getting people well, focused. We're, we're trying to we're trying to just make Herndon. Uh, we, we, you and I have always said it's the gym of the Dulles Corridor. Absolutely. And where yeah. I think it's a small town with a world view. You know, we have people from all over the world living in our four square miles. You know, I will tell you for the folks that do not know, um, I think you know, the diversity of restaurants. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, we, we actually started um, an initiative because we realized that in our four square miles, we have over 120 restaurants. Now say that number again. Four square miles, 120 100. restaurants. That is crazy. And most of them are locally owned and operated. Right. We have a few chains, but yeah. uh, most of them are family owned restaurants. So we have a website. It's, it's www.dineonherndon.com okay. and you can search and find We'll make sure we all, get that up for yeah, the first Yeah, so there, you can search all the restaurants in town. And the cool thing about the website, I always say this, all the pictures on the website, they're not stock photos. They were actually taken in our restaurants. So nice. all the food, yeah. it's for real. It's nice, Herndon. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, let's, uh, let's shift gears just a little bit. Okay. Um, Herndon was in the news last week uh, in terms of um, some elections um, being moved or not moved? Help, help me understand what happened sure. there, give us some background there. Yeah, well let me give you a little background. Um, mm -hmm. For at least the last decade it's come up here with council after council whether or not we should consider moving our elections from May to November and also whether or not we should extend our terms. Currently council and mayor run all at large um, for two year terms and we were looking into the possibility of extending those terms to four years because you know most of what we do is land use and that takes forever as sure. you know so we wanted sure. to have whatever council was in place to be able to see some of those projects through. Like, like the board of supervisors. Right. Their terms are four-year terms. Yes, okay. exactly. So um, back at our retreat back in September, the, the council, mayor and council, all seven of us, um, discussed all sorts of issues, rewrote our vision, did a lot of things. But one of the things we talked about was were these election questions. And so all seven of us decided unanimously that it was a conversation that needed to, to happen publicly and that we should take it to the public and see what they thought. Now, and, and just so everyone's clear, mm -hmm. Herndon is an off-year off year election in May as opposed to the normal state or federal November elections. Right. Well, a lot of towns and cities in uh, Virginia have May elections. Mm -hmm. And several years ago, I, I, within the last five years or so, I believe, the General Assembly decided not to fund those elections any longer. It was a tough budget year. You remember the recession. Sure, it was really sure. tough. So one of the things that they did was pull the funding for those May elections mm -hmm. and encourage towns to move to November. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, this is in the General Assembly, right? That passed. It, it yes. went through and, and everyone voted. Good idea. Well, I don't know if everyone voted, but, but it passed. <laughs> it passed. So, the majority of the representation yes. voted. In. And so it is allowed, um, towns can, by ordinance and cities, move their May elections mm -hmm. to November. Mm -hmm. So we held um, an unprecedented number of public hearings on mm -hmm. this. We sent out a postcard to every household in the town. Um, alerting the, the citizenry that we were considering some of these changes. We were looking at, like I just said before, four-year terms, staggered terms, and possibly moving to November. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was very important to us. We talked about it at the retreat. This was going to be a big deal, a big sure. conversation, and we wanted to be as transparent as possible. And previous councils had considered this, correct? Um, it had come up, I believe, in, in conversations with, mm -hmm. with residents and with the council, but it had never come to public hearing. Okay. But it had been discussed before. Absolutely. Because I, I think I had heard that there were quite a few people that had talked about potentially doing it before. So this was not like out of the blue. This wasn't a new idea yeah, that, okay. that we just came up with. Yeah. It's been talked about for years. Yeah. Okay. So um, we decided to put it on the public hearing agenda. Like I said, we sent a postcard to everyone. We held four public hearings throughout October through December, and we mm -hmm. had a final vote in December. So uh, in the public hearings, and just so the folks mm -hmm. sure. watching, anyone in the town or outside of the town, anyone really, mm -hmm. they were given two minutes, three minutes to voice their uh, opinion? When, when you come to speak on any item in a public mm -hmm. hearing, it's, you have up to three minutes. Okay. So. And, and you're, you're pretty good about letting people speak. I've been there, I've spoken, and mm -hmm. you, know, you wrote and you listened to everyone. 
I, we, we do. We do. <laughs> That's our job. And, right? and those meetings sometimes go to beyond midnight, right? They have their moments. They yeah. do. But, you know, so it was very interesting. I mean, I went into this really feeling that we should keep our elections in May and felt very strongly about the, the four-year staggered terms. That's where I thought I was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, when we listened to the public and we got... I can't even tell you how many. It was a huge outpouring a of conversation. Yeah. yeah, it was four public hearings. And in fact, people came and spoke even before our first official public hearing. Because right. word gets out, people know what's coming up on sure. the agenda, and they came and spoke. So um, we, we listened to the people. There were great arguments for and against each. People came in mm -hmm. passionately. Um, people, one, one thing that I really walked away from was knowing people love their town. Oh, and yeah. they want to have their voice heard. Yeah. So what I, like I said to you before, I saw the four-year term as an opportunity for whatever council is elected to see their projects through to fruition. And now, now let's just, just for a brief sure. moment, the reason that's important is because when you do have these development projects, mm -hmm. it's very difficult when you have that uncertainty in the council or the decision-making chambers. If I'm a developer, I'm an investor, I want some stability, right? So right. From, from that perspective, I like the idea that at least I'll get four years of a decision from a, a body. Well, and too, I think that I saw it from the citizens' perspective mm -hmm. that, you know, I've elected you because you've said you're interested in getting our downtown built, so mm -hmm. I'd like you to have time to do that. Right. And, I mean, that does take time working with the development community. Right, but nothing also, happens, yeah. But also through all the processes, there's rezonings right. and, you know, all of that right. uh, planning commission, all that bureaucracy, really. It takes time. It takes time. <laughs> it does. So um, as we listen to people, though, what I heard resoundingly was People didn't see that as an opportunity to get more done. They saw it as an opportunity for the council to be less accountable because they were only going to be up for election every four years instead of two. Yeah. So I really tried to listen to that because I hadn't considered it that way. But see, if you think about it, um, the reason I compare it to the Board of Supervisors is mm -hmm. because sort of it, it's a similar discipline of, sure. of what you make decisions on. Right. Um, Congress is elected to two years, but the reason we have senators to six and presidents to four is those just are roles and, and a profile of, of a group that you're dealing with bigger issues, basically. So, right. um, so I mean, I, I like the four year. I think it makes sense. And um, well, we're gonna break here in a little bit, folks, but when we come back, um, we'll get the second part of this story in terms of uh, what happened uh, at the vote and uh, some other things that uh, the mayor will update us on. So appreciate you staying there and uh, appreciate you coming back. And uh, we'll be right back. I need a job. Necesito trabajo. I would like to speak English better. Me gustaría hablar inglés mejor. I want to be a U.S. citizen. Quisiera ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos. For over 35 years. Por más de 35 años. The Hispanic Committee of Virginia has been serving our community. El Comité Hispano de Virginia ha estado sirviendo a nuestra comunidad. Job training and placement. Capacitación. Ayuda para conseguir trabajo. Education for children and adults. Educación para niños y adultos. Immigration, naturalization, and medical referrals. Ayuda para los procesos de inmigración y naturalización y orientación sobre médicos are a small part of what we do. son solo una pequeña parte de lo que hacemos. For help, information, or to volunteer. Para ayuda, información o para ofrecerse como voluntario. Contact the Hispanic Committee of Virginia. Comuníquese con el Comité Hispano de Virginia. Helping everyone participate more fully in American society. Ayudando a todos a participar plenamente en la sociedad norteamericana. Did you notice if you were missing half your kidney function? According to the National Kidney Foundation, 20 million people have chronic kidney disease and 20 million more may be at risk and not even know it. Anyone with high blood pressure, diabetes, or family history of chronic kidney disease is at risk. Early diagnosis is vitally important. To get the whole story, talk to your doctor and visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org or call for a free brochure. Because when it comes to chronic kidney disease, 
you might not know the half. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Hi, folks. Cesar here. Thanks for coming back again with me in the studio. We have Mayor Lisa Merkel, and we're talking about Herndon. So when uh, before the break, uh, for the folks that uh, are just joining us, um, there was a discussion, public hearing, on moving the elections from May uh, to November and possibly extending what I think is a great idea two years into four years. So that's where we, we ended. So wh what happened here? Okay, so, you know, um, I, I still, I think there's some merit to the four-year idea, but like mm -hmm. I said before, uh, what we heard from a lot of people was they, they want to be um, able to hold their officials account, accountable and they wanted sure. to be able to vote often. Mm -hmm. So in the end, um, we voted to um, to keep the term at two years, mm -hmm. but to move our elections to the to November, starting in 2016. Yeah, and, and I'm totally for giving more people the opportunity to vote. I, I just absolutely, think, I cannot think yeah. of a single downside. Yeah. You know, we're we're grappling with huge things. We are a small town, but we're the third largest town in, in the state of Virginia. And just so the folks understand that. May elections typically were 20, 25% turnout. At, at, the, at the most, yeah. And folks, and, and this is something you, you, I want you to make sure you get. In the state off your elections in November, the turnout in Herndon was anywhere from 40 to 48%. Presidentials, I think it zoomed up to like 70, 75% yeah. in the three precincts. Of you, you probably know better than I no. do, but I do know it's a significant, it's huge. A significant it's huge. increase, and yeah. it, it's hardly even debated. Yeah. So, um, well, the the the, <laughs> the argument could never be let's move elections from November to May. It'd be a hard sell. That, that just wouldn't make right. sense. So uh, anyway, I hate to interrupt you. So, so, <laughs> no, you, you got the floor. No. <laughs> you got the floor. <laughs> so um, the the votes. Uh, so we voted to keep it okay. um, to keep the two year term, but okay. to move from May to November because okay. as people came, it's it's good spoke, compromise. The, that, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, you know, I I just could not find a reason that more people participating was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, we're dealing with metro. We're the only town in the Commonwealth with a metro station coming. Uh -huh. I mean, we've got some big things it's coming huge. down the pike. We have twenty four thousand citizens who live in our town, and I think that especially as we make big decisions like metro and how to how to have, treat public transportation and get people out of their cars into their metro station, we need to hear from as many people as possible sure. about what they think. It's just a no brainer to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought. Yeah, so what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so let me back up a little bit. I'm going to get my wonk mode on and explain okay. about it, sort of how these things go. Sure. Um, the General Assembly, uh, the, the town has a charter, which mm -hmm. is like our constitution that lays right. out you know, how things work in the town. And part of that is explaining our elections and the role of the mayor and the council. Um, there are two ways to change um, May, your election from May to November. You can do it by ordinance, which doesn't require some General Assembly action, or you can put it in an, a charter bill, which does require general assembly action. And you might say, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just you know, pass an ordinance on your own? Well, w when we started this and sent out the postcard to all the residents, we were looking at possibly having four-year terms. And a change in term length does require a charter change. Mm -hmm. So we went the charter change route because these kinds of charter bills sail through the general assembly all yeah. the time. They, they just are almost never. They've approved. Tons. <laughs> well, th this year alone, I believe there were at least four other towns who mm -hmm. had the same charter change request that were that were granted. Sure. But um, as you know, in the General Assembly, we were shocked last Tuesday to see that um, it was voted back into a committee where it's since gone to die. Senator Wexton agreed to carry the charter bill for us. And, and Senator Wexton is the ranking representative? She's the of? senator that represents the town of Herndon. Okay. She is. Okay. So she carried the bill, it was Senate Bill 935, and she carried it. It, it passed the Senate unanimously, went mm -hmm. over to the House, and went to the County, Cities, and Towns Committee, which is very normal. They, they review these. It came out of that. Um, didn't pass that unanimously, which was odd because, to my knowledge, the others all did. But mm -hmm. um, then when it went out to the House floor, it was moved to Privileges and Elections Committee where I've been, or Senator Wexton was told by the chair of that committee that it would not be heard. So basically they'll take no action on it. So the General Assembly intervened on what the town leadership had said, this makes sense for us. Inexplicably so, Okay. yes. Um, which, which my question has been all week is what is so different about Herndon? Sure. All of the other charter bills yeah. moving May to November were approved except for Herndon. Something's fishy in, in that process. 
Okay, so uh, what, something what, strange as a foot. Yeah, uh, rotten in Denmark, I believe. Uh, Macbeth was it? Um, um, <laughs> so what, what's next for for Herndon's elections? Uh, uh, well. Um, we, I have placed it back on the agenda. We will now just okay. take it up as an ordinance, moving our election from May to November. And, and people will have a chance to weigh in. Once again, again. this will be the fifth public hearing that we've okay. held on this item. And um, it will be at 7 p.m. on March 10th in the council chambers. Okay, that sounds like that's uh, going to be an interesting uh, public hearing. Um, I think it will be. You know, we've heard from a lot of people. I mean, and I think that the council has already made a decision on this. Mm -hmm. and. Because of the General Assembly's inaction, we have been forced to uh, spend more money to advertise yet another public hearing, more staff time to keep um, our staff at a, another public hearing, and we'll hear from the people once again, and, and we'll take a vote. Well, I think, uh, I think you'll, you'll get things done. You are getting things done in Herndon. Um, let's talk about some of the other things that are going on in Herndon. All right, some let's of the, do it. I mean, I, first of all, I love springtime because springtime means Farmers markets, Friday Night Live, the festivals. Absolutely. Um, all those things that people love about living in Herndon. Oh, it's great. You yeah. can watch all this stuff. Exactly. Well, you know, tonight we're sitting here. It's a February night. We're covered in yeah. snow. Our department Nine of, degrees outside. Oh, <laughs> our Department of Public Works did a stellar job once again. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the big perks of living in town. We do all of our snow, our own snow removal, mm -hmm. so we don't have to wait on VDOT, who I'm sure is thankful since they have the whole rest of the county to deal with. Sure. But yeah, it's it has brought my mind to all of the springtime fun that's ahead. So, you know, Friday Night Live is a signature event. I know Absolutely. it's right in your backyard. Yeah. And, uh, we can hear the concerts from our backyard, which is great. Yeah. Um, it's a free event. It's put on by the Chamber. It, mm -hmm. This is the 21st year. Wow. It was one of the first concert series of its kind in Northern Virginia, and it's been named by all sorts of, you know, Northern Virginia Magazine and all kinds of other publications. So for the, the folks that event. may not have yeah. heard about it or don't know about it, it's basically a party on the lawn. That's right. Um, there's... Um, food and drink and just right. fun times, yeah, right? Yeah, it's great. It's a lot of cover bands, you yeah. know, a lot of bands that you've Families, heard of. it's very family it's friendly. It's very family friendly. Yeah. It's yeah. free admission. Yeah. And so it's just so great because it's on the town green in downtown. The chamber, you know, has the beer booth. We have local restaurants like Jimmy's and JJ right. Deli come in and, and have the food booths. Mm -hmm. um, you can bring your own food if you want, but yeah. you know, kids are running around playing playing ball in the front mm -hmm. of the stage and you have people like, you know, Kristen and the Noise, the bands right. singing happy yeah. birthday to children because yeah. their birthday is that night. It, so really it really is cool. It, it really is. It was actually what helped me find Herndon. Really? But we used to live just outside of town, and we're driving mm -hmm. through town one evening, and we're like, oh my gosh, what is going on down there? Mm -hmm. So we pull over and go. Gonzo's Nose was playing, and we've <laughs> been going pretty much every Friday since then. That was in 98. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that, you know, in the, So you make sure you keep that, because that is, uh, you know, I heard some things about budgets here, or budget. That defined Herndon Absolutely. for so many people. I couldn't so, agree more. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure we keep that going. Definitely. So, um, festivals. Can I tell you about the festival? Okay, Absolutely. you're going there. Sorry. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm it's sorry, it's your show. You're no. my guest. <laughs> Go. You know, you got to love a town that throws itself a party every spring. Right. It's right. every year, the, the weekend after Memorial Day, right. we have a four-day festival in downtown. 80,000 people come. Yep. The best night is Thursday night when the carnival sure. opens and every sure. kid in Herndon is there. Uh, my lady's so, there, too. She's one of those big kids. See, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so, and there's nothing better than being on the Ferris wheel and looking down and seeing all of the town. Awesome. Um, speaking of downtown, I'm just going to keep talking until you tell me I can't anymore. Yeah. Um, we yeah. have a lot of great new restaurants in downtown. We mm -hmm. have um, Europa has just opened. Right. It's right across the street from Zeffirelli's, which has been a staple in town for years. Mm -hmm. Russia House has moved into a new, I know they're one of your good friends and one of your yeah, favorites. Yeah, I think I have a revolving account. Uh, so, yeah. Something like that. Okay. So they've moved right across the street. Right. We have, um, I'm all over the place, we have a mural program in town. That's so right. there are murals all over downtown. There's mm -hmm. one that um, on the side of the vet that is Pets, Pets in the Park That's is right. what it's called. Right. Okay. And um, you know, all the pets on there are people who have made a contribution to the to the Arts Council to get their pet on there. Right. So I mean, yeah. your, your brownie's there, my, right. my pumpkin's there. So <laughs> That's right. It's just, you know, it, Herndon, I think that is just the essence of Herndon right there. Yeah. Where else can you walk around downtown and have your kids point out and go, there's brownie, there's right. you know, yeah. all of the pets they know. So. And what's cool about it too, is you, you mentioned those restaurants. Yeah. And then there's these other restaurants. So it's like, we've got uh, high-end fine dining, yep. white linen cloth tables, right. great wines to, you know, kind of like, mid-level, you know, not we've, super expensive. We've got something to, for everyone. Yeah. You know, that's what I love about Herndon yeah. is it is a community. 124 restaurants about covers it. 
Well, what, what else do I need to say, really? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Herndon is, um, it is such a diverse community. It's really a slice of who we are as a country. And I love that. My children are growing up in a place where, you know, they, they know people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. They walk down the street. A homecoming parade comes down their street every fall, yeah. you know, right down the main street of town. They know everyone's names on all the campaign signs. They mm -hmm. think this is normal. Wow. So, I mean, I don't know where, they're, where are they going when they grow up? They're, right. they're going to have to come back to Herndon. And I'm you know, that, that I think um, speaks to, I think, why it's working so well, because it is such a diverse, not just of, of ideas, but really culture, languages. I Economics. Mean, Herndon, everything, yep. right? And I think you really need someone that understands how to reach out to everyone. So keep doing that. that. That is like the thing that's making a difference. I mean, I hear it from people all the time. I mean, you know, there was this segment of Herndon's uh, not too distant past that was a little bit ugly. And I think uh, the town's kind of left that behind it, so. Absolutely. Clearly, keep doing what you do. What, what final things uh, do you want to do? Um, you've got another what year? In office, yeah. Uh, so, any any big plans? Or? Well, like I said earlier, I mean, we started off talking about downtown. The number mm -hmm. one priority for this mayor and council is to get our downtown plan off the page and into reality. People want it. We just had a, a citizen survey uh, where we, you know, asked citizens what they how they felt about living in town, the services, and what they wanted to see happening. Mm -hmm. It was overwhelming. People are ready for downtown, so we're going to make it happen. Walkable, walkable. Oh, and one last thing: yeah. those things you're painting on the sides of the roads for the bikes. The, the, the sherrods, the, the, you know, like, oh. don't cross here. Right. Brilliant idea. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> we actually, we're getting ready. Um, we're, we just uh, awarded the contract. We're going to be doing some improvements on all the trail crossings at Van Buren, Good. Ferndale, and Crestview. Crestview's going to get a lot of improvements. Nice. Because we want to make sure that the cyclists that are coming through our town are safe. And there's a lot of them, too. I oh, mean, my it, gosh. It, 180 an hour on a nice summer day wow. go through our downtown. That's awesome. Because, you know, we're the midpoint of the trail. Yeah. So, uh, for, uh, Vienna to, or DC to Percival, That's we're right. just about the midpoint. That's and right. it bisects our town. So I think it's really a main street that, that we are gonna capitalize on in years to come. That's awesome. One last idea to think about, that little station, that old uh, station. Yep. Maybe a little uh, convenience store in there. What Wouldn't do you that think? That'd be fun. That'd be cool. Yeah, well, well, you know, it has our museum in there right now. I know, but uh, just, okay. We, hey, I'm all about section. the history, Cesar, I true. come okay, on. Okay. We gotta hold on to the history while we're making the future happen. That's why you're the great mayor you, you are. <laughs> you're thinking long-term about this stuff. I'm trying to. So um, I wanna thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This has been absolutely great, and I hope uh, the people out there that do have any questions Go to your website, Facebook page, or just hit uh, the uh, town's uh, website. Mayor Merkel, thank you so much for coming. Folks, uh, we'll be back with uh, our next guest, and uh, thank you again for uh, joining us this far. See you back after the break. Cool. I helped turn my child's public school into a whole new kind of school. One with a curriculum that really motivates kids. One that has extended hours, six days a week, year round. With loads of academic, cultural, and recreational activities. One that has support services, like medical and dental, right there. A school where parents' involvement is encouraged. Where teachers have more time to teach and students are excited about learning. There's just one problem. My child doesn't ever want to come home. You can help turn your school into a community school for excellence. Find out how. Call 1-877-LOVE-TO-LEARN. It's coming right to your neighborhood. And when it does, you may be surprised. It's your social security statement of your benefits, and it's going to help you plan your financial future. Your benefit statement will tell you how much social security you're eligible to receive, and when you'll get it. Then, you'll know how much you need to save for retirement, because that's coming too. The future is in your hands. Choose to save. The toxic fumes from this meth lab are seeping into Jamie's sinus cavity. Ammonia vapors invade her throat. Toxic gases fill her lungs. 
Jamie's body is deteriorating. And she doesn't even know it. Jamie, dinner. So, who has the drug problem now? Find out how meth affects you at drugfree.org. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Hi, folks. Cesar here. Thanks for joining us. With me in studio is uh, my friend and the Democratic candidate for the 86th House of Delegates seat, Jennifer Boisco. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Cesar. It's really nice to be on Inside Scoop. Absolutely. And just so the folks know, um, we're friends. Um, you've done so much in uh, Herndon in the 86th in Drainsville. Um, I've donated to your campaign, full disclosure. Yes. And um, I just think you are the person to help us move this thing forward. So let's talk a little bit about um, your, your history, your, sure. all the great things you've done here. Sure. Thank want you. the folks to know. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, I, you know, I've been involved in public service my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, I started on uh, Capitol Hill in the U.S. Senate, mm -hmm. have worked um, all the way. I have... I have actually decided that it's more important to work at the local level, so I spent most of the past eight years working for our local board of supervisors, mm -hmm. helping people solve their problems here in our community, mm -hmm. and it's really been a, a very wonderful experience for mm -hmm. me. One of the things that I'm most proud of is, uh, as you were talking with Lisa Merkel, um, our mayor, talking about la the, the metro coming, mm -hmm. and I had a, a very in-depth job in the land use and transportation planning around mm -hmm. our, our um, stations in the Herndon area. Mm -hmm. We also worked across the jurisdictional lines to make sure that we were talking with Absolutely. other government leaders and staff members. That was huge. Getting the work done mm -hmm. so that we don't have to go back and, and uh, fix things later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also been um, the aide on education, mm -hmm. working in our local schools, helping um, bring resources to the community. Hutchison Elementary is one sure. of our wonderful schools, and we bring nonprofits mm -hmm. in to help yeah. make things Been better there, for the kids. Been there, it's diverse. I love what yep. you do there. I love it there so much. Mm -hmm. um, another issue that I worked on for many years was with our um, Health and Human Services. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had the opportunity to work with our nonprofits to help harness um, resources when the county doesn't have the resources sure. because the state is not sending adequate funding, yeah. as we know. Um, and, and so on a daily basis, you know, you see people who don't have enough to eat. You see people mm -hmm. who, who uh, you know, they can't get from a bus stop, you know, the bus doesn't go to their the community area where they need yeah. to go to. Sure. And so I work behind the scenes to help make that make that more efficient, make it more productive, and so that uh, our community is better and stronger. No, I think you've done a wonderful job. I'm doing this little side thing. I'm pushing for uh, Boisco Station there, the name of that metro. <laughs> so I, I think you've done an absolutely great job in, in what you've done. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Herndon uh, in terms of what, um, what's been going on there from your perspective. Um, just in terms of, uh, I mean, there's so much great stuff going on in Herndon, but recently y you had to have heard this whole uh, wackiness behavior with the, the election. Uh, yeah. Move. What's your take on what's going on there? Cesar, you know, I just have to take a deep breath before mm -hmm. I even talk about this. Sure. There were four other bills this year mm -hmm. that changed the election date from the spring to the fall. Yeah. As our mayor talked about it, um, the state stopped giving the funding for the towns to pay sure. for it. And so this makes sense. It's a money, say, you know, it's fiscally responsible. On the same day that mm -hmm. the town's charter bill failed, another bill passed with flying colors and no mm -hmm. one asked any question. Sure. I know that in public, um, Mr. Rust has stated that he didn't think the bill was a good one. Now, well, Tom Rust is the current... He's the sitting delegate, yes. Of the I'm challenging him. Okay. I just want to make sure that everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he said it was bad. It was bad policy. Well, why did he vote for all the other bills then? Mm -hmm. It makes no sense at all. Mm -hmm. To me, and this is just my personal opinion, mm -hmm. I don't have any fact, but I think he doesn't, he doesn't want to see us change the date because voter um, participation will be higher. Um, and that will probably um, that will probably um, bring more people of diverse backgrounds to the table mm -hmm. to, to put their votes out. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we know that in a town election, the, the voter participation is very, very low. Mm -hmm. um, and um, when we when we go to the fall, we know that you know sometimes seventy five percent of the people who are it's registered huge. come out. It's huge. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know that you've had this conversation, but I can't understand what the downside is. Yeah. Honestly. So full, full disclosure, and we'll extend the uh, invitation again to to um, Mr. Russ to come on the show and talk sure. about this. Yeah. Uh, because we we like to hear all sides. Um, I'm just amazed that the General Assembly put forth the ability for towns to self-determine their own yeah. elections. That's self-determination, mm -hmm. it's re representative government. And for someone who represents us, yes, because I live in Herndon, as right. do you, mm -hmm. uh, to block that, I uh, just beyond beyond my comprehension. So I can't understand it either. Mm -hmm. There is some. I, I think there is a bit of a pattern in mm -hmm. in the concern about the voter participation, though. Sure. There are other bills actually that have been passed or um, that he's voted for that I think restrict the right to vote. And I'll mm -hmm. just you know tell sure. you, sure. in 2012 he voted for a more restrictive voting procedure, so mm -hmm. voter ID bill. Um, and um, I, I know that one well. You're, you're, I filed you're, litigation to you're challenge You're up to that. speed on that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. um, in 2013, he voted to restrict voter registration drives. So right. that means I have am limited in how many voter registrations right. I can bring right. um, to the registrar, which I think is um, right. And and if you talk to some people on on this issue. Mm -hmm. They are convinced there is widespread voter fraud. There's no evidence of that. And and that I've tried to have this discussion with people, and what what is happening is they conflate voter registration with voting at the polls, right? And and you may have some knuckleheads doing dumb things, registering Mickey Duck and Donald Mouse to get paid, but those characters never show up at no. the polls. I, I have not met Mickey Mouse or Donald <laughs> Duck or any, you know. Right, but that's that's right. how that's how people get conflated information mm -hmm. wrong. Right. And and but Mr. Rust apparently believes there's still widespread voter fraud, which I find astounding. I have uh, oh, almost uh, 15 years of precinct operations mm -hmm. work um, yeah. here in the town of Herndon. I know yeah. that you've done a lot of it too. That's never an issue. I've right. challenged anyone to give me an example yeah. in the Commonwealth. <laughs> Go back 10 years. You can't find you, it. You can't, so, um, I, so I'm still, let's talk a little bit more about maybe um, what's next for him. I mean, what, what, what does he do? How does he defend? Um, have you challenged him publicly? I mean, what, what, where's his head on this? I mean, let's just speculate here. <laughs> you know, that's a good question. I know that, um, you know, he, he was really taken by surprise that anybody challenged this, that they mm -hmm. thought that it was something that was a bad idea. I think mm -hmm. he was completely shocked by it. Um, Delegate Ken Plum made comments on the General Assembly yeah. floor yeah. challenging all of the Republicans to ask them why they were going to restrict this, why they were going to send it back. And they were met with a resounding we're not responding to anything. This is no. the way we're doing it. And that is the horrible thing that goes on in the General Assembly, right. is they don't play by fair rules quite right. often. And we've got, to, we've got to do something to change the, that. Um, the phrase, don't tread on Herndon, comes to mind. And I'll, I'll challenge my friends on the other side mm -hmm. to explain to me why this is bad policy when it is good policy for every other municipality right. that has gotten the approval. The only thing I can think of is, you kind of touched on it, but I'll say it publicly, that Herndon's very diverse, and we have a very um, high population of ethnic mm -hmm. min minorities that make mm -hmm. up almost the majority. And maybe we don't know what we're doing. I don't know. Someone tell me why Herndon is different than the other municipalities. I won't put words in your mouth. Those are my words. Um, but anyway. Enough about Mr. Rust. He he probably he probably has um, sunk himself, in my opinion, and that's why you're running. Uh, I think you'd make a, a far better representative for that district. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the things you do differently. Sure. Well, you know, one of the reasons I decided to run was one because I'm I'm seeing you know in my work with the county that we don't have the resources that we need mm -hmm. that. Um, 
I want my kids, I've got two daughters, you've met them both, they're um, high school and college, and mm -hmm. I want them to be able to come back and afford to live sure. in Herndon. I think mm -hmm. it's a fabulous place to, mm -hmm. you know, Lisa was talking about all the wonderful things there are, but in Northern Virginia in general. Um, we have college tuition that is leaving kids with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt mm -hmm. that they're never going to be able to get over. They're never going to be able to buy their first house. Mm -hmm. And we know that our, you know, our public defenders can't even afford to come back and live in the communities right. where they're working. Right. We've got to do something to change that. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that it's a livable community for all, that we have affordable housing, that we have transportation system that works. We have to make sure that our education is affordable for all, and we need to make sure we're taking care of our youngest kids, giving them a fair shot, because we know that that every dollar we spend on pre-K is seven dollars saved down the line for things sure. you know that are, are a problem. Sure. One thing, uh, another, you know, education is a really big issue for, for me, Cesar, and I don't know if you know this, but in the military, I want to say it's 75, I'm, I might be underestimating, 75 percent of the 18 to 24 year olds are not eligible to enlist in the military because either they're physically unfit I heard that. or yeah. they are not able to pass the test right. or they've been incarcerated and have trouble with the law. I think you're right on the, the stat. That is scary. Yeah. 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 We've got to do something. We've Absolutely. got to invest in our kids. And, and, you know, in the past 10 years, I think we've dropped, you know, uh, 14 to 20 percent of, of our um, investments in our education system. Yeah. That's not okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to make a difference. I decided, I, you know, I actually, I don't know if you knew this, I volunteered for Tom Rust when he was running in 2001. Mm -hmm. He'd been the mayor. I thought he'd done a good job. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I've been very disappointed because well, he's changed. He's changed. He's changed. Yeah. yeah. I think, and, and I, I won't put these words in your mouth, but the change I've seen is he thinks more like people that want to live to like an independent world, like churn your own butter. <laughs> you're on your own. And I think for some of us, we're more interdependent. Yeah. Like, I, like I need people to, to live in this community, this great community. Mm -hmm. I can't do that on my own. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, it's, it's almost as though he's forgetting why he, he came in the first place. He did a great job when he was the mayor of Herndon. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he had a lot of accomplishments, and I'm never going never gonna to fault him for that. I thought sure. he did a good job. But I think going to, going to Richmond, he was not prepared for the partisan ship that he has to be a part of and he becomes imbo uh, beholden sure. by the Republican leadership there and sure. they don't care about us. They right. don't care whether or not we're going to be able to vote when we want to. Sure. Um, he's, he's got favors that he's got to cash in and, and he makes those choices. Ouch. You know? Yeah. Well, we're going to make sure we, we um, get the folks the information you need. I think we've got your website up. Yep. Thank you very and, much. Um, we're going to make sure you've got uh, Jennifer Boyska's information. As I said before, we uh, invited Mr. Russ. We'll keep reaching out to him. Jennifer, thank you so much for coming thank on Thank you so show. much for having me, Cesar. Good really luck out there. It. Thanks so much. Some dreams are universal. Dreams that inspire us. Multiple sclerosis is a devastating disease that changes lives forever. The National MS Society does more for people with MS than any organization in the world. But we can't do it alone. To get involved, visit us online at nationalmssociety.org or call 1-800-FIGHT-MS. This is why we're here. Because nobody dreams of having multiple sclerosis. What's wrong with this picture? Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm. Fashion. Flavor. It's economics and politics. It's change. 
Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org. Go there now for your free parent and teacher action kits and give our kids the power of global knowledge. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow. Art, a universal language, an expression of culture. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Hi folks, Cesar here for our last segment and uh, finishing out Ladies Night in the studio here. With me, good friend of mine, Michelle Menapace. You are a community activist volunteer. <laughs> By the way, you do a lot, so that, that's not really a good title for you. <laughs> I do do a lot. So I want the folks to uh, get to know you a little bit in terms of um, what you do, why you do it. Uh, what, what gets you excited? What gets you going out there? First, tell us, tell us why you do what you do. Well, um, a lot of my volunteer activities, uh, well, they began when my children first started going to school. Mm -hmm. And someone walked up to me and said, PTA meeting Tuesday night, library be there. And that was the beginning. And um, I believe firmly that a, that a community thrives by the engagement of its citizens. And sure. that's where it began with, with um, You got the bug. That's, I, I you did. You went to your first community volunteer <laughs> activist meeting and you were hooked. <laughs> yes, well, and I also had worked um, when I was doing a paid gig, um, mm -hmm. worked with a lot of volunteers myself. So I was recruiting volunteers, understanding what it was like to um, to engage those people, listening to them, and I think it just sort of spilled over um, after I became a mom and, and mm -hmm. started doing this kind of work. So where do you tend to focus most of your time now? I'm um, still engaged in school-related mm -hmm. issues, um, mm -hmm. but have expanded from there. Um, I like doing things that uh, for, especially for citizens who are typically underrepresented. Mm -hmm. That started with our children mm -hmm. who rarely have voices. They have zero uh, voice. Especially when they're young. Yeah. Uh, when they get and by older, the way, that translates into budget requests. It does. And so forth, so. <laughs> it does, and with uh, more than half of our county general fund going to the schools, that seemed like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when I would get my tax bill every year and look at that and recognize how much was going to the schools, I realized that that meant a lot to both my children, to other people's children, and wanted to be more of a voice for them uh, mm -hmm. in the community. So how's that uh, working out? What sort of things, activities are you kind of moving forward on? Well, right now, I am working, uh, I was just elected chair of the Community Action Advisory Board, mm -hmm. which is a federally mandated organization, a mm -hmm. local board that oversees the administration of community service block grants, which are federal grants for people living in poverty. Mm -hmm. And I started doing that, again, with the transition from children as a representative from, uh, from the school side. Mm -hmm. bringing the voice of families and children into that. That's great. And now I'm, I was just elected chair at our meeting in February. So I've expanded a little bit more, but still mm -hmm. looking for those underrepresented voices. And certainly a lot of our uh, citizens living in poverty are among that sure. population. Yeah, and, and the area you live, you're down in the uh, Lee District area. I am. That's pretty diverse. Yes, it is. I mean, there's a lot of diversity down there. Yes, and a, a quite a bit of poverty as well. Yeah. Um, so there's certainly something uh, worth doing in my community. Mm -hmm. I've been a member of uh, Supervisor McKay's Citizen mm -hmm. Advisory Task Force on the uh, county budget. Mm -hmm. with a focus on schools mm -hmm. and we're about to come out with our seventh report this year we're working now and have another meeting tomorrow night and uh, that's been very educational for me as well mm -hmm. because I'm learning more about the county side of the budget and the the work that's going on there trying to marry that with the schools and the focus of our group has been since day one sustainability mm -hmm. we need a sustainable government and how do we do that? And it's particularly challenging now since the recession. Sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, this stuff costs money. Absolutely. And, and it needs funding. And I would argue that you need to make it a priority. 
Right, and it needs to be a priority from, you know, Board of Supervisors to the representatives. I mean, the money has got to be there. It is. Yeah. Um, what our citizens, though, deserve the um, maximum efficiency and effectiveness out of the money that they spend. Mm -hmm. And that's more of a conservative look at things than I typically do. Mm -hmm. but. I think that comes from the work I've done with, with Jeff's group okay. and, and looking at that and also recognizing that we have to maximize every dollar that we do get sure. so that every student in our schools is being served properly with the right level of education and that it maintains the community's expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be really critical this year is the community coming together to say exactly what our priorities are, both on the county side of the budget but also on the sure. school side, to say there isn't any more money. Mm -hmm. The economic reality today is our supervisors can't tax our way out of what seem to be our needs. And how do we address that? That's going to be critical in the next um, couple of years. Now, are you going to be testifying before the uh, board or you know, for their budget hearings? Absolutely. Okay. Um, both on, on my own individual behalf, but also um, as the representative for the Community Action Advisory mm -hmm. Board and their priorities, their funding priorities, which are housing, education, employment, Mm -hmm. and um, some emergency services, but also child care, making mm -hmm. sure that people are lift, can lift themselves out of sure. poverty and have the means and, and, um, to, to do it on their own and not re have to rely on emergency services sure. or uh, funding from the community. Yeah, and, and by the way, for young, um, young minds, that intervention or care or, or education is so important. Uh, for me, I mean, Jennifer touched on it a little bit in the previous segment, that just a small investment in a child um, pays off dividends over Absolutely. a lifetime. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there are the right kinds of inter interventions as well. Sure. Um, it is one thing to bring them into the school, but if you are not following him or her uh, in a proper way, intervening when they need help, mm -hmm. instead of reacting, pro being proactive, um, that's critical as well. Oh, great. So um, what, uh, what do you have planned uh, this year or next year? What, what's the <laughs> activist uh, sort of strategy here looking like for you? Um, I think I will continue to focus on that sustainability piece mm -hmm. of, of the work that I do. I will be uh, admonishing the school board um, to look at that in terms of their leadership of the school system. and. Also looking at um, how the Community Action Advisory Board's work fits into all of this, how we can help people get out of poverty so that they aren't the drain, if you will, on our resources, making sure that they become, as they want to be, the more productive and uh, part of our community, and giving back, mm -hmm. making sure that they become tax-paying citizens rather right. than, um, you know, having to rely on help and assistance. Sure, sure. Or, you know, we end up um, incarcerating people because we didn't take the time to invest when they were younger. Exactly. And I've been involved in those issues um, with student discipline mm -hmm. and trying to get that to be more of an intervention um, and a, a restorative process for mm -hmm. our students so that they don't become uh, it's proactive versus exactly. reactive. Exactly. And our, I got to say, our new superintendent is is moving in that direction. Good. We have some new discipline codes Good. that that are definitely leaning that way. And Good. I've been very pleased to see her Good. movement on that. Why? Well, I, I, you know, what you sound like the ladies before uh, you. I mean, uh, any plans uh, in your future? that uh, you're thinking about or, you know? Um, well, I'm, I think I'm always thinking about Good. the school board, always thinking about running for office because of the passion that I have for this yeah. community engagement. Um, and I think it's important to listen to the community. Mm -hmm. So um, I, if I were to consider a run like that, I would certainly be someone who is listening, whether you agree with me or not. I want to hear what you have to say. As uh, Mayor Merkel was talking about earlier, what people told her kind of surprised her. Mm -hmm. And yet, and that drove then their decision. So I, I would do much the same sort of, um, have the same sort of stance on, on 
community leadership. Yeah, I, I think you, you would do well if you should decide to go down that route. I mean, well, I would hope so. Yeah. I would I mean, hope so. I mean, and I think you said it. The, the important thing is kind of listening and understanding where people are coming from, right? Yes. Because yes. there's like so many people that are in public office today that they've picked, first of all, they've picked their voters. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, <laughs> you mean, don't do that on the school board, that's for sure. Well, that, that, yeah, there you go. Maybe we shouldn't be able to do that at all. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and, and once you pick your own voter, like, you know, I know this neighborhood, this street, and these houses, these people, there are four of them, and they vote this way. Mm -hmm. I just think that is a horrible way to run elections, where you have the elected official picking out their own voters. Oh, I agree. I think it, um, I, I definitely think it should be an impartial um, board or commission that yeah. determines the, the district alignments. Yeah, because then I don't have to listen to anyone, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. I, I've picked the voters exactly. that are going to vote me in, mm -hmm. and I can do the heck what I want at that point. I agree. And, and one of the things that Jeff McKay has said to me in, in working with him is, um, you know, at the local level, like the supervisors and the school board, being on a, a leadership role, taking on a leadership role like the school board or the board of supervisors is definitely where government is service. Yes. It's not politics. It is service. Right. Yeah. And you owe it to all of your constituents, whether they voted for you or not. No, oh, absolutely. They, they deserve that sort of representation. Right, because you're not going to plow this person's street and not <laughs> that person's street. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you, you can't do that. <laughs> well, and, and here in Fairfax County, with relation to the schools, for example, only 30% of our population have a student in a school. So how do, you, how do you reconcile the, that number mm -hmm. uh, when so many, and with, with our aging population, um, the needs there are going to be very different than they are today. Sure. So there's a lot to look at. And, and yet, the quality of our schools drives our property values, mm -hmm. drives the businesses that come here, yeah. um, drives everything uh, uh, that's good about our county, and we can't overlook that. Sure. So, so it definitely are, they are definitely difficult decisions that have to be made mm -hmm. uh, in terms of funding, but I think if we can say that it's sustainable, if we can say that it's honest and responsive to our community, then that's the best we can do. And I think that will help us move forward. You know, one as we're closing out here, one of the coolest things I heard, the stat about Fairfax County, there were 104 languages spoken in the homes in Fairfax County. I just thought that was the coolest stat I'd heard. I think there are um, 50 of them in my neighborhood alone. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yes, you talked about Lee District being diverse. No, that, we are. I, and, and I just love that. I, I, I grew up in that environment. I just, I, I think I'm against that way as well as is Lee. Michelle, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. I, I do uh, hope you uh, consider long term uh, what you want to do as thank an you. activist. So. Thank you. Folks, uh, thanks again for joining us. We'll uh, certainly see you back uh, next time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, it's